Yep, we're in the old intercoastal right here. We're about to be off of it though. So I had a lot of stuff on my desktop, a lot of footage that just didn't quite make the cut. But then I discovered there were some great tips lost in all this footage. So let's take a look. <laughs> nice. Some mornings are just so beautiful, it's just nice to be on the water. These guys were just jazzed to be here, man. Oh, that's a good trout. Woohoo! On this day, we all happen to have old towns. I had the 106 motorized. I do that when guiding a lot, and I have several people, so I can zoom from one person to the other and help everybody out a lot easier. You throwing that big old zoom? Yes. Oh, wow. Big bait, big fish, right? Here's a good tip. In colder months, try larger baits. Big trout especially will feed on one or two big mullet a day when it's cold, as opposed to in the summer when there's a lot of shrimp around. Wow, that's a good trout. There you go, he sucked that thing Dude. in, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, he's swallowing it. Oh, that's a better fish right there, buddy. You might have a keeper on your hands now. This was a light wind day. And with pedal drive systems, we don't have to really drift on a light wind. We can kind of just scoot around and throw the islands and see what's happening. I wanted to point out this oil field service type boat. This They usually call them crew boats. This shape. Look out for them. Look out for this style. Because look at the wake they throw. They throw a bigger wake than barges, offshore boats. The captains of these crew boats know they throw a large wake. And a lot of times when they see kayaks or skiffs, they'll slow down. But if they don't, pay attention. Birds, pelicans working bait or something. And we've got the old town armada, baby. <laughs> well, people, I just lost a mid 20s trout on this island. Sick to my stomach, but that's okay. We still having fun. And we're gonna find some more, I guarantee you. We're gonna get it. Let's go get it. Get them. When you've got beautiful weather, great company, and the fish are biting. You just can't ask for anything more than that. I love taking people fishing, man. What a blessing. Good morning, folks. I got my hands full this morning. Got a big group, a bunch of siblings. They're looking forward to fishing together, trying all this stuff out, new to kayaking. See if we can teach them something. What? Now, you won't need your cassette. Wow. I don't normally bring all that stuff. I just want to have a lot of people. I have to make, cover everybody, you know? That's this little Hobie extension is really neat, Miss Mary. Okay. Um, if, if you're looking for an inexpensive way to get your rod elevated above the salt, check out these Hobie rod extension tubes. Also, if you put the cut out facing you, it places the reel right behind your back and it's easy to grab the reel and lift the rod out. If you, you always want to keep your paddle on the right side where the bungee is. Okay. You never want your rod in that holder with the paddle in, in that holder. Okay. Because what happens, I've seen it a hundred times, is they'll, they'll grab that paddle and that blade will lift that rod right out and you'll never even know it. Yes, you always want your rod that you're not using on the opposite side. Okay. So when you rear back, you know you don't hit that rod. You see many broken like that too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I told you I should have worn my white socks. Look at that. <laughs> he said, could I wear my walk socks? I got hit by about five jellyfish the other morning, so I always wear some kind of sock. When you're in the dark and it's early morning, the anticipation uh, makes me giddy. <laughs> Here I am tying on a Skidderwalk Junior in mullet color. When in doubt, man, just natural it out. That's just a, it's just a guarantee, man. If you can't tell where they're going with real bright colors or real dark colors, uh, just throw something natural. A lot of folks I guide decide to bring their own kayaks so they can kind of rig them and learn to use them in the waters that we fish around here. So I never know what I'm gonna be presented with. And sometimes like this tandem, we kind of have to figure out ways to put the gear we need in there. We have to, I kind of have to teach them how they can add milk crates and things to keep their rods up and out of the salt. So, uh, but it's all part of the fun, right? Rigging. That's a good trout, y'all. Got him on bottom. Alright, we 
we are learning how to how to catch fish with a popping cork today. But as soon as I throw one on bottom, boom, keep them. Sometimes folks that never have worked a jig find it easier to use a popping cork, but when they want to hit low and slow, nothing we can do about it. Yeah, that's a good one too. Clipping right in that boat. Grab the leader, just fling him in. Teaching work order while fighting a fish is something I find myself teaching a lot of when I'm guiding. We want to keep the reels out of the water, so I try to teach everybody to flip the bail, get rid of the rod, and then focus on the fish. You get that order down, it makes things a whole lot easier. You can set that rod behind you in the rod hole, you don't have to worry about it. Oh, okay. Look at there. Okay, you can get it. Thought I'd weighed, but it was deeper than I'd thought when I jumped in. Now I gotta get back in. Sea world. All right, that's him. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's how you do it. Get on the nose. <laughs> you just belly up to the nose, man. All right, we're back in business. Yeah. Got two folks with me. Chandler Bing, gonna be fantastic, man. I can feel it. I can feel an awesome day coming. We had technical difficulties this morning, folks. The yellow boat is acting a donkey, so Miss Janine's going in the <laughs> top water 120. All right, there we go. What's wrong with this thing? The rudder will not turn. Bad rudder. The steering mechanism finally gave out on that old Outback, so uh, I gave her the good boat, and I'm gonna paddle. Looks like I'm going to be paddling an Outback like a chump all day. These old Outbacks actually paddle fairly well. But this old paddle was heavy. I wish I had one of my bending branches or something, man. It would have been nice. Here's you go. That's good. Oh, this first cast of this paddle tail, I just caught a little red. Ray Swimmer. Running it weedless, so they're kind of under them. I misjudged the storm. I've been watching it. Especially in the warmer months, squalls on the Gulf Coast can pop up from any direction, so you really got to keep an eye out and kind of judge where they're headed and make sure they're not coming toward you. Looking quick, man. Jeez. Needless to say, this one caught up with us. We misjudged this one, kind of. It ended up hitting. You can see it's super isolated, though. Blue skies in the distance, left and right. But uh, you really got to keep an eye on them. This one I wasn't too worried about. There wasn't a lot of lightning or thunder with it. It was just pretty much a fresh water rinse down. Just another fun day guiding on the Texas Coastal Bend. And look, now when we get back, I don't have to take a shower. Right, Teresa? To you, that's how tired I am. To you. Good morning to you. We got Wayne here. He's about to show me his tackle. He wants to know. Taking him out this morning, he wants to know what to use. So let's take a look and see what he's got. No, I just usually just take what I need. Any kind of paddle tail, that three inch size, I, I definitely throw. Okay. I bring dark colors and light colors, and that's pretty much it. Wayne didn't know what to throw, but he had a lot of selection. So I said, let's just think light and dark. Get some smaller baits in light and dark and some larger plastics in light and dark, and we'll figure them out. Ready to go? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Come on. Come on. Yeah. You can do it. No, she can't. Oh, no, she can do it if she wants to. Come on. You ready to go? It's time we go. Come on. It's time we go fishing. Come on. You can do it. Come on, Penny. Come you on, got, Penny. You got this. Get up. You got this, Penny. <laughs> no. Come it's on, too girl. High. <laughs> that didn't take long. First cast with the Spook Junior. First cast with the topwater plug. That's awesome. He was in some thick grass, too. You hear me? There you go, Penny. Yeah, we got one. What was that? Looks like a garfish or something. Yeah, we got a little, uh, like 16 inch red, 14 inch. 
I'm, I'm teaching him about anchoring. I'm teaching him, teaching him about oh, uh, just what line he needs. Line. Yeah, we're getting out of control. We're getting this under control. One, one step at a time. There's, there's a lot to learn if you've never done flats fishing. Oh, but first cast with that first cast with that top water float. Got the new tarpon 14 out. Trees in the compass. Old standard. And we were off, son. Man, I threw right where I saw the tails. I didn't exactly sight cast him. But... Oh no, that's a flounder. Oh no. Oh, game off. Flounder! There we go. I don't know what I got. I don't know what I got. Ah! Popped off. <laughs> They're absolutely pile driving bait out of the water. So much oyster. They're popping shrimp. Oh my gosh, I'm walking on just solid oyster here. Trout. I know that's not trout throwing bait out of the water over there. I got one. I'm going to back up. There's a bunch more in here. That's a flounder. That's my third flounder in here. Yep, it's third one. This one's a keeper though. Not what I'm after. Side cast the skipjack. Yeah. Tail end of fish bites. Nope. Got a red. Little red. Mm hmm. Here's a good tip, if you're ever driving through the marsh, always keep an eye out for tail and redfish. They don't want to eat this time, but I have been driving by, seen the tails jumped out, and hooked fish from the roadside. Always keep a sharp eye. Whew. Got Eddie here from Stone Oak area, San Antonio. Got a feel for it? Yeah, I'm getting there. It's pretty shallow. Boy, it is, man. Tide's way out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use that wind to carry our lure far. There's a great tip. Always anchor with your back to the wind, allowing the wind to carry your lure twice as far. And then we'll just spin around. In your case, the wind's gonna spin you around downwind. Uh -huh. And then we're just gonna dive bomb cast with that wind. A lot of people take off and go far, but I've caught some personal best fish within 100 yards of the truck. Yep, another good tip. Two of my PB trout have been caught within one 200 yards of the truck. So especially on weekdays when there's not a lot of people around, I like to start working from the boat ramp out. Wow, unreal. Mullet said he did. Must have, I hit him in the head when it came down. Crazy. That's an okay trout. That might, might keep, bro. <laughs> Finally, huh? We have thrown our faces off. All right, people, we out here throwing Skitterwalk Juniors and Spook Juniors. Yeah, there we go. I think it might be a keeper, man. <laughs> yes, see, I busted my eye on my rod, guys. Throw them in my floating island here. I'm so excited to fish this morning. I forgot my hat. I think it's overcast. No doubt. 
fine. They're just kind of finally turning on, I think. Oh, shoot. Popped off? Oh, he's got a good one. Yeah. There we go. That's what we've been looking for. Nice. Get out of there. I think he's going to be just under. I think so, too. Yep. 18 and a half. Yep. Beauty, though. Yeah, yeah folks, nice. we're doing something really different today. Today I've got Robert with me. He has like a Hobie AI with an outrigger and like a two-horse motor. <laughs> good nice to, to meet good you. Good to feature. Right. Absolutely. Still a hooker, man. How long have you been here? Oh, just, when I texted you that I got here, I literally just pulled in. Come on. Here's a good one. Painting helps prevent corrosion. Down here on the salt, everything rusts. So when we get a brand new bike, the first thing we do is put a coat of clear coat spray paint on it. And then everything else, I just spray paint and it really slows down the rusting process. All right, me and Rob are about to take off here in a minute, but I wanted to, to tell him, I wanted him to tell y'all about his awesome rig here. What we got going? Is this an AI? This is a uh, 2016 Adventure Island, and um, right now I'm just running it with one of the outriggers on it. I have both. Bought this mainly for offshore fishing, going out to the oil rigs. Um, love it because it's super stable offshore. I can paddle it, I can pedal it, I can sail it when I have the sail in, and I've got a two horsepower motor. So, um, been testing it in the bay a little bit, and absolutely love it. Super stable, super fun. Uh, we're gonna get this thing out here. I want to see what this AI is gonna do, man. I've, I've never seen one in action. You ever watch Key West kayak fishing with Steve? He's got the same rig, goes way offshore. That's the closest I've been. Look, I'm touching one for the first time. That's awesome. Let's do it. Look, he gone. That little Honda wants to take off. It don't have neutral, man. It ain't got neutral. Doing a drift here, doing a drift. We both got drift socks out. Thousands of cabbage head jellyfish. I must have hit 50 of them coming over here. Thud on, thud on. Crab walking the solo skiff. I think I had a black drum or a redfish. Yeah, he's, he's throwing bait up in the. We got a redfish throwing bait up in here. There he is. There he is. Crab walking the solar skiff. That's got to be a redfish. Come on up, bud. You get another one. You get a double. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. Saw him, saw him blowing up bait. Threw right to him. Crab walking the solo skiff. What we got here? Is that a black drum? No, it's a red. Yeah, it's a red. This is where that 10 pound braid, look, look at him blowing up down further down the line. And yet another tip. If you want to throw a very light bait super far, drop down to 10 pound braid. He's not legal. Crab walking a solo, baby. Tuck your windage in a little bit in, inland and let it carry it to the middle. Oh, that was almost it. Bait. I'm getting so good with doing this, but I'm sitting on the very nose of the solo. I'm just pushing. I'm keeping my nose into the wind. So well, I sure am glad I got to use all this old great footage, and I hope you learned a tip or two along the way. Hey, if you want to go fishing with me, hit me up at 30milesout.com, and if you want to see what's going on day to day in the 30 mile out world, just head on over to Patreon, join up, and we'd be glad to have you. Till next time, 
What? You can dump it all you want. I'm low to the ground and this thing is neck high. I'm stop hitting me and let me focus on getting up. Right? You can stop the thumping. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. And no, I'm out.